So this is the introduction for Mass Planner. So when you get your download link and you sign up, you will get a dashboard that looks similar to this. Obviously this dashboard just shows you the summary of your accounts that you've got set up statistics, what's new, if they release any updates. You can also contact support through this part here and any notifications if your accounts are blocked or suspended or your proxies are not working or whatever it might be. You can also invite your friends if you click that tab up there, stick their email address in here and it also has some tutorials if you click on there. So I'll move on quickly into Mass Planner and what it does. So this is where you set up your accounts on this second tab here, which is called Social Profiles. And uh, you can click Add Profile, and you can add any one of these profiles here. So you've got all the kind of standard social media profiles that are here. Facebook, Google+, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Tumblr, Instagram, YouTube, Quora, and you've obviously got an email tab here. That's all good and well. So you just simply click Add Profile, and stick in the name of that account, so you can call it Craig's, Facebook or whatever, username, password and click verify account and that will allow you to set up your account. You can then add pages and, and whatnot on here as well. So um, I'm just going to delete this account because we don't have a username and password for it. I've already got pre-selected accounts up there for demonstration purposes. So once you've added all your accounts, it will sit like this and they should all be valid. If it says invalid credentials, obviously your login details are incorrect. You will have to get them correct to carry on to the next step. Next tab down is tools. And this is where you set up all your profiles and what they do and uh, stuff like that. So we're going to start with Facebook. So what you do is click on more tools and it has the Finder tab here. So I'm going to go through all of these tabs and tell you what they do. So the Finder tab is Group or Page Finder. So you can stick in SEO here, just for a, a keyword. If you're in the used car sales niche, then put in used car sales, whatever you want. Click Extract Groups, and what you'll see down at the bottom is a whole bunch of groups. So it'll show you hundreds, um, Facebook groups that are relevant to the keywords that I've just searched for. Now, not all of these groups are obviously going to be that relevant to me. It looks as if there's stuff from all over the world on there, um, stuff in languages that I don't really understand, and things like that. So they do have group filters here, where you can skip groups with more than X amount of, uh, of users. You can skip groups with less than X amount of users. You can skip groups with non-English characters and their names, and there is other um, filters there that you can use to kind of refine your search. So you can do the same with groups and pages here, depending on what you're wanting to look for. Obviously, finding a group is one thing. Joining it is the next tab here. So what you can do is once you've extracted your groups, you can then join these groups. So you can put your status to on, and what will happen is your joiner will join the Facebook groups that are sat on this Finder tab here. And you can do this by basing it on specific settings. So you can do it at certain times of the day or the week. You can rotate the days if you want to do it randomly at certain days. You can wait between X amount of seconds before each new operation. A new operation basically is when the tool joins uh, groups. And obviously you can see the settings here. Join a maximum between 10, to, 10 and 20 groups per day. You can set that to uh, you know 50 to 100 or whatever you want. Obviously what you want to do is keep that looking natural. You can pick a group at random from the list and uh, you can pick groups by the number of members in descending order. You can do a whole lot of stuff here um, with different settings as well. So if you want to join groups, this is a great way to automate the process. If you want to unjoin groups, then you basically find groups and then use the unjoiner part there to unjoin groups if you think you've joined too many or whatever. 
Um, so I'm not sure why you'd want to unjoin groups um, at scale, but the option is there. You can turn notifications off for groups specifically as well. Um, if you wanted to switch off notifications. Account actions. So you can auto accept friend requests. You can stick in X amount of people per day. So you could accept 10 requests a day. You could stop accepting requests after you hit a specific figure of friends. You can obviously do not accept friend requests from certain people with certain names or you can accept friend requests from people with certain names and again you can do exclude users with non-English characters and you can also set up this tool to auto like some of the person you've just friend request eh, some of the one uh, you can auto like some of the people you've just accepted friend requests from um, again might just show you, it might just imitate, you know, interaction on there. Not sure again why you would want to do that, but the option is there. Um, accept is for groups, so you can accept people into groups. If you've set up a group, you can accept people. Um, if you want to, to can accept people into groups that you own. You can invite people to groups, invite people to friends, eh, pages and events, and you can also invite page post likes as well. And again, there's a whole heap of settings on here. Contact. I'm not sure you really want to be spamming people, but you can eh, friend request people, um, no, you can basically import these people if you want to you know from a list wherever you may get it from you can also auto reply to new messages that people send you you can also um, send messages to people as well um, all on autopilot backup is just backing up your data um, you really probably don't want to be using this um, too much. Um, I'm not sure why you'd want to use that one. Bump. So this basically it works with posts on a campaign, um, on a group. So you can basically bump your post to the top of the group again, um, should you wish to repeat and spam Facebook groups basically. Um, so that's the settings for that. You can also use spin tax if you want. Now, what you can also do is comment and like people's posts. And there's a whole heap of options down here that you can do. You can obviously set up how many comments and likes you want to do per day. The most important part here is the sources. So you can obviously put in the likes of Coca-Cola, or if it's your friend or you know someone that you like or whatever it might be you can certainly put in them as a source here and your account will automatically start to like comment and say different things on their um, pages or profiles you can also delete posts if you want to delete posts and um, for whatever reason Again, I'm not too sure why you would want to delete any of your posts, but the option is there if you're going to be spamming and maybe want to delete them after a while or whatever. You can also change your cover photo. Um, for your wall, you can obviously do that on autopilot. Again, I'm not too sure why you would want to do that on autopilot. You can also say happy birthday to your friends or whatever um, on autopilot here and you can use spin tax and obviously if you want to call them by their first name hi dave you would basically put in here hi and then first name happy birthday all the best hope you have a great day or whatever and this will automatically say happy birthday to friends that are having a birthday on your account you can also unfriend people based on specific settings 
And again, like and comments based on URL or this is the Facebook group one. So obviously you get comment like for Facebook profiles. This is more Facebook groups. Full browser experience. So once your fake profile is on Facebook, if you want to use this for driving traffic onto specific websites, blogs or whatever, you can also use this browser experience here to send people from Facebook onto your website or whatever it may be. And you just need to stick the URLs down here. You can obviously put in the settings and all that kind of stuff as well. So you can do that as well. And that is pretty much all you want to do with Facebook. Facebook's not great, it's, it's all right. It can automate quite a lot of stuff as you can see. Um, I personally think this tool is a lot better for some of the other social media profiles. So Twitter, for example, just clicking more tools here. You can follow people based on all of these kind of settings again. You know, user filters are all here. So you can do that to completely refine your process. And follow sources is the main tab here. So I can basically follow anyone who follows any of my competition. So for example, say one of my competition was uh, Moz. For example, I can make sure that my Mass Planner account can follow everyone who follows Moz on Twitter. And it can be completely done in autopilot based on all of these kind of settings here. So you can set any amount of target accounts that you want. And uh, I would always recommend that you put in a fair amount on here and get the tool working for you. When you follow people, people automatically tend to follow back and it can grow your following massively. So it's quite a cool tool. Also, you've got this follow back option. So you can set the tool up to follow people who have followed you back automatically. Um, it's quite a cool feature there. So you don't have to do all that manual grunt work. You can also un <coughs> unfollow certain people. Now you can unfollow people if they don't follow you back. So basically you can tick this box it's there, user filters, unfollow all users followed by MP, which is Mass Planner. If you leave that unchecked, so you want to leave that unchecked, it will only unfollow those who didn't follow you back. So if people don't follow you back, the tool will automatically unfollow them. And you can put the certain days or whatever you want in here. So you can put it six days, six and a half days or whatever. If someone doesn't follow you back, make the tool unfollow them and you can do that on whatever scale you want. Just make sure that you keep it real. Don't sit and rip the ass out of it. You can favorite um, your friends or colleagues or your rivals, competition or whatever. You can basically favorite some of their tweets and you can do it again using all these settings here. And the most important part is the sources so you can follow you can like posts or favorite posts by keywords or specific Twitter accounts so if you like Moz for example you can like Moz Moz's tweets three times a day two times a day whatever the hell you want you set that up in your settings there um, and that's it so you can favorite stuff you can retweet stuff and again, it's based on the same kind of sentence here. So retweet sources um, is the key part here. So you can do it from a provided list, keyword, um, or whatever. You can also contact people. So you can send messages to new followers, auto-reply to new messages, or just send people messages. You can also mention people. So if someone follows you, you can say thanks to my new followers, blah, 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 blah. And uh, again, do that. You can also delete posts. So if you tweet and you want to delete the stuff further down the line, you can automatically set that up. And you can also use Twitter to drive traffic to your pages, blog posts, or whatever you want to do. So again, that's what you would do under full browser experience. Instagram. So as you can probably gather, the stuff is pretty repetitive, so I'm not going to sit and repeat the same stuff all the time. Um, the user filters are the same, the follow limits are the same on every account. 
follow on Instagram similar to Facebook. You can put in follow sources so I can follow specific followers of target accounts. I can follow by hashtag, um, keyword and, or whatever um, that's out there So or geographic location as well. So you can see all the settings there. Follow back on Instagram, unfollow, like, comment are all very similar. So you've got sources, again, you can pick users, you can contact people, you can direct message people, you can manage comments, delete posts, delete comments, block followers, repost stuff, users and hashtags, like comments, save posts and story viewer. So Instagram is really easy to use and it does pretty much everything that Twitter does and it's quite a cool tool. YouTube. So again, you can follow, you know, or subscribe to people. Um, you can unsubscribe. They're calling it follow, but it basically means subscribe. You can like, comment, you can like comments. You can also drive people from YouTube onto your bl a blog or whatever else you want to do. And you can also use these profiles to watch specific videos as well. So if you want to drive traffic to specific videos, then you can do it here, or you can just watch videos from a specific channel here. So again, a whole lot of automation going on here, a whole lot of stuff that you can do with YouTube, you might want to just get your views up, you may want to get more subscribers, you may want to drive traffic from YouTube to manipulate click-through rate, there's a whole heap of reasons why you want to use a tool like Mass Planner. And Google Plus is the last one I'm going to do a demonstration on again, Finder, Joiner, Unjoiner, Notifications, Follow, Unfollow, Like, Full Browser Experience, and you can extract users as well. Um, so, <coughs> again, no one ever really got a lot of traffic from Google+, Plus. you can certainly make that happen. So that is pretty much a demonstration of what Mass Planner can do. Global tools is just Instagram stuff there. Um, settings is just some standard settings, I don't really mess about with these too much. Proxy manager, if you've got multiple accounts on here and you want to use proxies, then you can stick your proxies in there. Here is the cost of Mass Planner. So up to 100 accounts you can do for $59, up to 10 accounts is $20. So really it is cheap as chips and well worth using. And you can basically use it to your heart's content. You've obviously got to think outside the box as to what you can use this tool for. You can do a whole lot of automation. And as I say, it can build your own social media followings up, but it can also manipulate click-through traffic and everything else as well if you put your mind to it. So great tool, well worth the money. It works 24-7, 365 days a year. So it's certainly one that a lot of people should be using.